we developed a pretty awesome product. We thought uh, it was yeah, I liked it. a water filter that was um, it was like a thousand times more efficient to move than bottled water, which is sort of the sort of the status quo for disaster relief. Often, like a cue, like right after the disaster, they'll hand out bottled water. It's heavy. It's bulky. Um, expensive to move. So this was you know a thousand times more efficient to move um a hundred times cheaper so on and so forth um, and that's just based on about, the amount of mass to like the amount of water you can get yeah, out of a sucker you could really okay. pack it onto a truck all this stuff um, it's cool and it was a, a little personal water filter and we were like this is going to be amazing so we finally got our you know got off of the drawing board we had some prototypes we'd been prototyping all the time but we weren't really talking to customers but um which was the mistake and so we went to a conference and showed it to like Oxfam, Red Cross, so on and so forth. And um, turns out that everyone does uh, delivers aid by family, not by individual. Interesting. And so they were just like, you know, we don't really use personal water filters. And even no. though there's like hygiene reasons to do it and so on and so forth, like all of our planning and all of the good thoughts that went into it I feel like often you get caught up in this idea of like, I can't really show this yet because I haven't solved all the problems I know exist. But the danger there is the deeper you go, I mean, two things. One, the cost of making changes as you go through a project increase kind of exponentially. <laughs> and the second is that you might have just missed some like really fundamental things, you know, some assumptions you have built in that you don't really realize. I've been there so many times. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, you know, I gotta, gotta keep a it a secret. Startup. Nobody can know about this idea. <laughs> right. Like we need to make it lighter and we're working on like getting a machined titanium chassis or whatever. <laughs> so forth. Right. I, I worked with a, with a startup that was trying to make, I mean, I don't want to go into, can't go into too much detail, but basically it was trying to make a product that went on your feet that did a few things. And they originally wanted me to figure out how to like make a, a chassis for this thing. Uh, yeah. All right, but, so I uh, shouldn't out your client. No, no, it is a shoe. I mean, it goes on your foot, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but they wanted to make a chassis that was below a certain weight. I forget what weight they specified. And they're like, you know, you have experience with composites and machining. Like, what, what do you think we can do? And I was kind of like, my first question was just, you know, where, like, how did you come up with this threshold you're trying to hit? And they're like, oh, it just seems like a, you know, that's pretty light. Oh, Jesus. And I, was like, and I was like, okay, so like we can spend tens of thousands of dollars developing like no doubt what you're asking for is achievable. But maybe you'd be better off just like cutting it out of a block of wood and paint it a nice color and maybe glue on some motors and stuff, bring some users in and be like, hey, this is a fully functional prototype. But we're having some bug, but seeing as we're here, like we may as well use this time. Can you just strap these to your feet and like walk up and down some stairs? Yeah. Right. And suddenly in like two or three, you know, whatever, two or three days or like a week or whatever, you can build something that looks like the thing works and actually get a real test of what does the customer want? Because it might turn out that you painted it green and they're like, why is it green? I wish it was blue. Yeah. 